Does Dropbox still have huge upside? What is going on guys? Welcome into this video today. Welcome to another news article breakdown video. And if you guys couldn't guess that is the stock we are gonna be talking about today is Dropbox. This is a stock I've mentioned a lot on the channel. This is a stock that's really just beaten down and for a really not good reason. So a lot of people make the argument like, oh, they have a lot of competition, like Google Drive, Microsoft Teams. Well, they've had this competition. This is not new competition, you know? And they've still have managed to grow both top and bottom line for years and years and years, as well as just bring on new customers and continuing to grow. So Wall Street just hates this stock and I feel like that rubs off on a lot of people and that's why this stock is so heavily shorted. But hey, you know what? I digress. So we're gonna go over this article that was written by Gary Alexander on Seeking Alpha. And hopefully you guys get some value out of this. I hope you guys enjoy these because I really like doing these for a lot of different reasons. But if you do get some value out of this, if you do enjoy it, please drop a like on the video. That really does help out my channel a massive way. And I really appreciate every single one of you that do that. Also, if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe, turn that notification bell on so you don't miss any future uploads. Anyway, getting into this article, Dropbox substantial upside remains even after its rally. Shares of Dropbox for years, a laggard in the software sector, have run up approximately 13% year to date. Driving additional enthusiasm for the stock is hopes that Dropbox might be acquired following the Salesforce Slack deal. So you know, this is something I don't want to happen. I don't want Dropbox to get bought out for a lot of different reasons, but I personally think this company has great standalone value. And I can understand why there's, I guess, enthusiasm, optimism, however you want to look at it as to why this company would get bought out. Because as I just mentioned, Salesforce, for spot Slack, and this is a good acquisition company. This can definitely provide a lot of value to some company. But like I just said, I really think Dropbox has great standalone value because they also have the addition of Hello Sign, which really no one talks about how big that is for the e-signing of documents, especially you know not just in today with this the pandemic going on, but going into future years. That's just going to be bigger and bigger. And it's going to help so much more, as I talked about in my Dropbox full analysis video. But hey, you know what? I digress. But I do think Drew Houston knows and he understands that Dropbox has great standalone value. So I. I'd be actually a little surprised if they were actually get bought out. I know there were rumors of it getting blocked out by Oracle not too long ago. They actually mentioned this in an article, so we will talk about this again. But I would be pretty surprised if Dropbox was actually bought out. Even standalone, Dropbox is a fantastic business with growing revenue and rich cash flow margins. Shares look undeniably cheap at approximately 4.3 times forward revenue. These days, amid fresh all-time highs in the stock market, it's getting increasingly difficult to find solid technology players that aren't trading at nosebleed valuation multiples. Now, that's a good point here. This has nothing to do with Dropbox. And this is why I do like these news breakdown videos because when I read them, sometimes they make points and I can give pointers to newer investors out there. So in, in addition to me going over the news on a specific company, you also get some tips and tricks on how do I invest and how I look at different things. And this is one of them right here. Tech is very overvalued right now. There's honestly not too many tech stocks that I find at very attractive valuations right now. Dropbox one, Facebook is one. Obviously you can make the argument for Amazon, Apple, like those big tech giants, you can make the argument that those are always buys for whatever reason, but there's a lot of tech stocks that have run a lot. And so be very, very careful in tech. If you're investing in tech, especially if you're investing heavily in tech, especially if it's some growth company, be very, very careful because they have run a lot and a lot of them have completely whack valuations like this article just mentioned. Dropbox is one exception to this rule. Once a hot Silicon Valley unicorn, Dropbox has fallen off in recent years as its growth rate has moderated from a pre-IPO pace in the mid twenties to the mid teens now. I mean, I don't know if I would refer to that as a significant drop off, you know? I mean, you can't just expect to grow revenue is 50 plus percent every single year for as far as the eye can see like forever. It doesn't work like that. Like you're still don't growing double digit revenue with all the competition. You're still bringing new customers. I mean, I don't know what else he wants, but hey, you know what? I digress. Bears have speculated the slowdown in growth is due both to oversaturation of the file sharing market as well as steep competition between Dropbox and very familiar vendors like Box and Google Drive. Yet so far this year, Dropbox has healthily outperformed the broader market, rallying approximately 13%. Investors renewed optimism on the name is driven primarily by two factors. Salesforce 27.7 billion acquisition of Slack as a similar company that enables remote work collaboration, Dropbox has been increasingly seen as a takeout candidate. And going back to this very quickly, for those of you that did not see it, Slack actually was bought out by Salesforce for about 28 billion a few months back. Workforce reductions. Dropbox announced in light of its slowing growth and pandemic challenges, it would cut down its global workforce by approximately 11%. Initially seen as a negative move for the company, investors have now taken this to mean improving margins and cash flow, despite Dropbox already being far more profitable than similar tech companies of its size. This is something I talked about in one of the other Dropbox news videos. I 
made. Initially, this was seen as a very, very big negative by a lot of people, those people with a very short-term mindset. Me, as you know, I look at the long-term and I think this is gonna benefit the company, as it says in the article, because it's just gonna benefit the cash flow and margins once they get through this. Dropbox remains a long-term hold in my portfolio. My argument for the stock is fairly simple. I think an acquisition scenario is viable, but given Dropbox's large base of extremely valuable customer users, it might be an attractive play for a company like Microsoft, for example, which has aggressively wanted to retain its broader market share in the consumer space by operating several seemingly unrelated divisions like Xbox gaming alongside PCs and hardware. Yet whether or not Dropbox has acquired, I think its most recent fundamentals show an incredibly vibrant company that will improve its margins even further after it slims down its workforce. Additionally, the stock's valuation among the cheapest in enterprise software shouldn't be ignored. In my view, the Dropbox rally still has legs. Stay long here. So I don't like what he's saying here, but I do agree with it. And what do I mean by that? So if they had to get bought out, someone like Microsoft does actually make sense because obviously Microsoft has experience in this space having Microsoft Teams. So this would fit in well. They could bring in more customers and it would just fit in well with the overall business model that they have in that sector right now. Now, but as for the rally part of it, I actually do agree. I think this rally has a lot more to go. I mean, it really hasn't rallied a ton as of late at the time of me reading this, but I think it has a lot more to go in this rally and they have earnings coming up on the 18th. So I believe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, their earnings come out. So I wouldn't be surprised if Thursday, this stock moved big one way or the other. Well, I don't know, it, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I really would not be surprised if this stock moved in a big way, one way or the other. And guys, this stock is gonna move in a big way and don't be surprised if it doesn't come back. Why Dropbox acquisition makes sense. When Salesforce made a play for Slack late last year, offering an eye-popping 27.7 billion for the company, at the time representing a 54% premium to its pre-announcement share price and at a healthy 26 forward revenue multiple, the move rocketed the markets. At the same time, however, fitting Slack into Salesforce's portfolio of applications made total sense. So this, this has nothing to do with the article I'm about to say here, but it's a little thing I've learned after investing so much. So usually me personally, say a company buys out another company and I own the company that just got bought out. So let's say for this example, to make that a little more simple, let's say Slack is bought out by Salesforce and I'm a Slack owner, I own Slack. Usually what I do is once that goes through or even like when there's really big rumors and it's like basically a done deal that it's gonna go through, I usually sell out of that position. So I would sell out of Slack in this situation. Now, why would I do something like this? Well, first off, Salesforce is buying Slack, right? What if I'm not familiar with Salesforce and I'm very familiar with Slack? I invested in Slack. I didn't invest in Salesforce. I'm putting my hard earned money into Slack. I put my hard earned time and research efforts into Slack. I didn't put it into Salesforce. What if I don't like Salesforce's management team? What if I don't like what Salesforce is doing? What if Salesforce has no idea how to run this Slack business? It's a big risk and there's a lot more risk to it than I think initially people think. Initially, people probably just think, oh, this stock's running up, this is perfect, this is great for the company. Not so much, because a lot of times it runs because when a company gets bought out, the problem is they're getting, they're selling out for a valuation that doesn't make sense, because otherwise, why would you really sell to your company? Why would you sell it unless you're getting way overpaid? Think of it logically like that, right? But another thing is a lot of times what happens with deals like this is sometimes, sometimes the company that buys out that smaller company really doesn't know how to use it to its best advantages if you know what I mean. In other words, a lot of times what happens, it can cause a lot of conflict between say, we'll take company A and company B or Salesforce and Slack will do again. So it can cause a lot of conflict between Salesforce management team and Slack's management team. Think of it more so like in sports when like a, someone signs a really big free agent to pair with another star and it really just doesn't work out. They're not on the same page and it's ultimately it's just a wash, the bottom line. It's very similar to that here. Salesforce, which is seeing saturation in its core sales cloud and marketing cloud apps, continually needs transform m and to keep up its vaunted growth rates, its last few mega deals were Tableau and MuleSoft. Slack's ability to enable remote work plus create a shared workspace among teams made it a perfect fit into Salesforce's existing portfolio of productivity tools. Obviously, Salesforce is off the table as an acquirer, but Dropbox also fits this bill for another would-be acquire. Over recent years, Dropbox has transformed itself from primarily a consumer-oriented tool to becoming a bona fide enterprise software platform. Teams coverage on Dropbox not only to store, but to collaborate on their files, a tool that that has become indispensable in the remote work era. Other software companies that have large portfolios but may be lacking in collaboration team workflow tools may look to Dropbox to fill some of this gap. A number of potential acquires to Dropbox have been floated, but I think Oracle would be one of the most likely since both Salesforce and Oracle follow a similar growth via M&A playbook. Like I said earlier in the video, there were rumors that Oracle was gonna buy them out, but as far as I saw, and it really didn't have any legs to it from all my research, it was just rumors. Now, as I've said earlier in the video, I really hope they don't get 
get bought out, and I wouldn't even consider a risk of getting bought out, but if they do get bought out, I just think this company might be limited because I really think Drew Houston is gonna turn this company into something fantastic. Beyond the enterprise applicability, Dropbox's base of 15 plus million retail users is also incredibly attractive, and that number's continuing to grow. As I mentioned before, despite being a large enterprise software company, Microsoft still prizes its consumer hardware and gaming divisions. Buying Dropbox would be a good way for a primarily enterprise-driven company to instantly gain a built-in base of consumer users. Dropbox is doing fantastic standalone as well. A key point I want to stress, however, is that the bullish thesis for Dropbox does not depend on an acquisition. In my view, Dropbox is performing incredibly well on its own. Take a look at the company's financials so far throughout Q3 of 2020. Then here they just basically have the income statement, what they did for revenues, gross profit, operating expenses, research and development. I'm not going to go over that. If you guys want to, I'll leave it here. You guys can pause and take a look at it if you want, or you can go look at it on their investor relations page or Yahoo Finance, but I'm not going to go over it in this video. In the third quarter, Dropbox grew its revenues at 14% year over year, paced to 487.4 million. This is certainly lower than the mid-20s growth pace to the past, but given the pandemic and the fact that Dropbox is a slew of similar competitors, the fact that it's still able to grow double digits is still worth considering. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also key to note is the fact that the company has added 1.25 million net users since the third quarter of last year. And what's more, average subscription revenue per user has also risen, up to $128.03 as of this quarter three, indicating Dropbox's success as converting more users into higher priced premium plans. Dropbox is more impressive for its profit expansion than for its growth, however. The company's pro forma gross margins increased 330 basis points to 80% in quarter three, putting Dropbox among the highest echelon of gross margins in the enterprise software sector. Even better than that, Dropbox's pro forma operating income approximately doubled to 112.2 million, representing a 23% pro forma operating margin, up 10 points from the 13.1% in the year ago quarter. As a percentage of revenue, Dropbox was able to shave off three points of R&D spending and three points of sales and marketing spend. Coupled with a three point bump in pro forma gross margins, as the company moves to cut down 11% of its global workforce we expect this margin expansion to continue. How can you hate a company like this? A company that can grow double digits, fight off the competition, trade cheap, trade cheap. That's another thing, guys. No one even talked about that. It trades cheap. I'm not exactly sure what the forward PE is off the top of my head. I know it's under 30. It's definitely under 30. I think it's actually under 25. I believe it's 23. Let me know down in the comments what it is right now at the time of you guys are watching this. I believe it's 23. Go check that out on Yahoo Finance. Free cash flow has been another big draw for investing in Dropbox. Again, here's just their most recent free cash flow statement. I'm not going to go into depth here. They've got the net cash provided. They've got the free cash flow, free cash flow margins. Again, I'm not going to go into detail. Go ahead and pause it and check it out, or you can go look at their investor relations page or Yahoo Finance if you want to do some more research yourself. Year to date, Dropbox has seen its free cash flow jump by 44% year over year to 332.3 million, also representing a 460 basis point improvement in cash flow margin. Again, we expect this trend to continue improving the back of the worst for reductions. And guys, this free cash flow is only going to rise once they don't have to pay those severance packages for the 11% of employees they cut on top of not having to calculate that impairment charge for getting out of the lease of their warehouse. Valuation and key takeaways. In spite of solid standalone fundamentals, strengths plus the possibility of an acquisition, Dropbox remains incredibly modestly valued. A current share price near $25, Dropbox has a market cap of $10.27 billion. After netting off the $1.22 billion of cash on its most recent balance sheet, Dropbox's resulting enterprise value is $9.04 billion. This represents a valuation multiple of just 4.3 EV revenue based on the Wall Street's current consensus revenue expectations of $2.11 billion for the current year. And if we assume a 24% cash flow margin on that revenue tied to Dropbox's year-to-date free cash flow, Dropbox's resulting free cash flow multiple also looks cheap at 17.9. EV fiscal year 21 expected free cash flow. All in all, this is a great value stock to pick up for your portfolio. Keep riding the upward momentum here. I actually really like this article. I really do. You know, I've read a lot of articles on this channel, especially as of late, I've been reading a lot of articles and a lot of them, there's always something I really just don't like. I'm like, you know what? I completely disagree with this. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. I actually really like this article. I agree with almost everything that Gary Alexander said in this article. The one thing I don't agree with, and he didn't say this, but this is just the tone I was getting. He sounded like he wanted Dropbox to get bought out. He really wanted that. I personally, like I just said, I do not want Dropbox to get out. That's the one thing 
thing I don't want to see. Mainly because I think Dropbox just has great standalone value. And if Dropbox were to get bought out, say by Oracle or Microsoft or whatever the case may be, I would sell this company. One, because like we talked about, I invested in Dropbox. I'm not investing in Microsoft or I'm not investing in Oracle. That's one reason. But two, and this is a very important one, that I would have a disagreement with the management team because I think Dropbox can continue to grow. I think it's a 1 billion in free cash flow. I think it just can continue to bring in more users and it's going to continue to expand this smart workspace and this product that they're putting out. So if they were to sell out and they were to get bought out, I would personally disagree. I would sell this stock immediately. But their earnings are coming up. Like I mentioned, they've got earnings coming up this upcoming Thursday. You guys are seeing this on Monday, I think. So they're coming up in a few days. So let me know, come back to this video and let me know in the comments what you thought. Or go ahead and DM me on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is. Let me know what you thought of their earnings. Because remember, Dropbox usually beats on earnings. They almost always have. So I, actually, they might actually have always beaten on earnings. I can't remember off the top of my head. But so I'm really excited to see these numbers and I'm really excited to see if this stock moves in a big way one way or the other. Because if it goes up, guys, there's a good chance you don't see it back in the 20s ever again. But hey, if it goes down, I'll likely be a buyer. If it goes up, then I'm going to have a very nice profit sitting in my bank account on Friday or my brokerage account on Friday morning. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. But make sure you're always doing your own research and your own due diligence because I'm not giving you any sort of financial advice. Just a random guy on the internet for entertainment purposes only. Now, this is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of it, please drop a like on the video. That really helps me out in a massive way. If you really want to help me out and support me, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Turn that notification bell on so you don't miss any future uploads. Let me know what you think of Dropbox. If you own it, if you want to buy it, where you think this stock can go over time, all your predictions, all your numbers. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Let me know down there. I'd love, love, love to hear from you. And I'll see you guys in the next video.